Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with One Bite Thai Flavor Bomb Salad Wraps. That's right, I am very excited to be sharing what I think might be the world's most exciting appetizer. And during my 50 plus years on earth, when it comes to food, I've only had my mind blown like maybe five times. And the first time I had Miang Kam was one of them. Okay, it may not look like it when they set it down on the table, but this is without doubt one of the most incredible things you'll ever taste. And to get started, we're gonna to put together a very simple, highly unusual, but intensely savory and flavorful sauce. And what we'll need for that is some unsweet and finely shredded coconut, some finely chopped roasted peanuts, some minced shallots. And if you don't have that, you can use some red onion, which would not be as authentic, but would work fine. We will definitely also want some finely minced ginger, as well as the freshly grated zest from one lime. And then after we zest it, what we'll do is cut it in half, and we will also squeeze in the juice. And in the actual recipe, we'd be using lemongrass, which many of you won't be able to get. So we're going with some lime here, which is gonna serve a similar purpose. And then we will finish off with the most important ingredients, which would be a fairly large amount of brown sugar, or if you have it, palm sugar. And then probably the most important ingredient, some Asian fish sauce which no, is not the greatest smelling ingredient ever, but it is definitely one of the best tasting. And then we'll finish up with a big splash of cold fresh water, at which point we can give this anywhere between five and seven swirls before we head to the stove and place it over medium high heat. And what we'll do is wait for this to come up to a simmer, stirring it a few times along the way. And then once it does start simmering, what we'll do is back our heat down to medium, and we will cook this until it starts to thicken up and reduces by about half. So basically what we're shooting for is something that looks like this. And that is pretty much it. We will turn off the heat and then we'll let this cool down to room temp before we use it. And yes, while intensely savory, this sauce is gonna be fairly sweet, which really is crucial to the success of the dish because of all the different intensely flavored ingredients we're gonna wrap up and serve with this. So we'll go ahead and let that cool down while we assemble the rest of our ingredients. And I'm not gonna show you all the prep, since most of it's very straightforward, but I am going to show you how to peel and dice a piece of ginger. And no, we are not using a peeler, we're using a spoon, which really does the best job of scraping off that skin. And unlike a peeler, we're going to be able to get into all those little nooks and crannies. And this really is the best method I've ever come across for peel and ginger root. And then once that is without skin, we'll go ahead and cut this into about eighth inch slices. And if you happen to want to trim off some of the ragged edges to make this dice a little neater, go ahead. Or you can make this as precise or rustic as you see fit. But anyway, once we have eighth inch slices, if we then cut this into eighth inch strips, by turning it and cutting it across, we should theoretically be able to achieve a fairly uniform eighth inch dice. And if you're thinking, I can't eat pieces of ginger that size, well, you can and you will. And once we have everything put together, you're gonna to be so glad you did. And that's it, once we have our ginger diced. The only other thing I'm gonna show you how to prep is our one and only animal-based ingredient. And that would be some diced up any kind of cooked chicken. Okay, preferably something grilled that was marinated in some classic Southeast Asian ingredients. But really, any kind of cooked chicken will do. And as you might be able to see, I'm trying to do this in about quarter inch dice, which is pretty easy if you're using chicken thighs since all we have to do is cut quarter inch strips and then turn it and slice it across every quarter inch. And by the way, the authentic recipe does not use chicken. Okay, it actually uses dried shrimp, but I assume most of my audience couldn't find those or wouldn't use them if they could. And it really does still come out beautifully if you use the chicken. So we'll go ahead and dice that up and we will transfer that into a bowl and then onto a tray, along with all the rest of our flavor bomb salad wrap ingredients which will include some toasted unsweetened coconut flakes, which just get toasted in a dry pan. And please make sure you get those fairly brown. And then we'll also be wrapping some roasted peanuts, as well as some Thai basil, which is not a traditional ingredient, but I include it since we're not using the traditional leaf to wrap these. And I'll explain that more very shortly. We will also of course include our beautifully diced ginger, as well as some similarly sized diced shallots. And then next to that, we have some sliced Thai bird chilies, which look like this. And you see that nice long stem? That is what you should be holding when you slice these, as they really are intensely hot. So please be careful. 
especially if you tend to touch parts of your body without thinking. And then, believe it or not, we're also going to wrap up pieces of fresh lime. And yes, you're going to eat the whole thing, and it's going to be amazing. And then, by now, our sauce is fully cooled, and as you can see, thickened up substantially. And then, as far as how to wrap all this goodness up, I like to go with some nice big large spinach leaves. And for the record, this stuff's usually wrapped in something called wild pepper leaves, also sometimes called chow plu leaf, or beetle leaf. But anyway, the point is you're probably not going to find the actual authentic leaves. And for me, the best substitute is spinach. And while it's not the same, by including a little bit of Thai basil, I think we can get something pretty close. Or at least I assume, since I've never actually had the real thing. And then to make this a little more user-friendly, we will go ahead and place a few small spoons into the things we don't want people to grab with their hands. And I'll let you decide what those things are. But definitely those Thai bird chilies is one of them. And that's it, we are finally ready to start wrapping. And please allow me to demonstrate. We're going to take one leaf and place down a little bit of our chicken, or dried shrimp if we're using it, followed by a nice big pinch of that toasted coconut. And then we'll sprinkle on a few pieces of roasted peanut and one of those beautifully fragrant Thai basil leaves. And then I'm just recommending one slice of the lime, and then just one piece of that Thai bird chili, which again is crazy hot. And then we'll finish up with maybe one or two pieces of shallot and ginger, depending on your tolerance. And then before we wrap this up, we will top it with about a teaspoon of our sauce. And that's it. Hopefully we haven't overstuffed it, and we are able to roll it up. Because this must, this has to be, eaten in one single bite. All right, that's the rule. No exceptions. And when you pop this in your mouth, and start chewing, and all those different intense flavors start mingling together, your mind, as mine was, oh so many years ago, will be blown. This is quite literally an explosion of flavors in your mouth. I mean, it's going to be acidic, and bitter, and sharp, and tangy, and spicy, and juicy, and crunchy, and nutty. But all that crazy culinary chaos will all be pulled together by that incredibly savory, sweet and sticky sauce. I mean, these things really do defy description. And if there was ever a dish you had to make and taste yourself to appreciate, this has to be it. And of course, if you want to add a few other savory tidbits into this, go ahead. All right, some versions include slices of garlic, or different, not quite as hot peppers, or maybe different herbs like cilantro or mint. So as long as it all fits in one bite, go ahead and use whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the Vince Vaughn of your Mia and Calm. And speaking of swingers, if you're having a party, you can just serve it like this and let everyone make their own. But if you want to do some of the work for your guests, you can if you want to assemble these and then plate them up like this and then simply serve it with the sauce in the center, which is kind of nice and very user-friendly. And this is the way I had it the first time I ever ordered it. Which reminds me, not to get all serious, but whenever I post a recipe like this, I will always get a few comments accusing me of dumbing this down. But that is not what I'm doing. Okay, I'm not changing the ingredients because I don't think my audience can handle it. Or they won't understand it or appreciate it. What I am doing, by doing things like using chicken instead of dried shrimp, or some lime zest instead of lemongrass, is simply making this a little more approachable and attainable to the average person who only has access to a basic grocery store. Okay, everybody, no matter where they live, needs to taste this. So please save your cards and letters. I have not dumbed this down. I've actually smartened it up so that more people get to experience it and learn about it. And then if everything goes according to plan, they love it so much, they then go out and find the ingredients to make the real thing. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling one bite Thai flavor bomb salad wraps. To summarize, this is one of the most delicious, most exciting bites of food of all time. And it would be beyond tragic to go your entire life without experiencing these. Which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.